<laughs> it's all math. Okay. So before I start solving these questions, there, there are three statements I want you to know. Um, if I have an absolute value of A being equal to something on the right hand side, you have two statements, all right? So the first one is going to be A being equal to B or A being equal to negative B, okay? If I have absolute of A less than or equal to B, I'm going to have A less than or equal to B or um, A greater or equal to negative B, okay? Similarly, absolute of A greater or equal to B is going to be A greater or equal to B or A less than or equal to negative B, okay? So these three statements are very key um, to um, whatever we're going to do today, okay? So let's get into it. So the first question is the absolute of X being equal to 16, okay? So um, knowing what I've already said, we have two statements, x is going to be equal to 16 or x is going to be equal to negative 16, okay? So that's it. So the solution set is just going to be x belonging to, you know, negative 16, 16. I always know that you have to use um, curly brackets for equations, okay? All right, so the second question, we have absolute of 3x minus 1 being equal to 4. And what we're going to do is that we have two statements. The first statement is going to be 3x minus 1 is equal to 4. Or you have 3x minus 1 being equal to negative 4. Okay. So we're going to solve both of them at the same time. So let's do the left-hand side, the left one first. Then we'll go to the right-hand, uh, the right one. Okay. So we're going to have 3x being equal to 4 plus 1. Okay. And then you're going to have 3x being equal to 5. So I have 3x divided by 3 being equal to 5 divided by 3. So I have x being equal to 5 over 3. So that's one solution. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to have 3x being equal to negative 4 plus 1. So I have 3x being equal to negative 3. 3x divided by 3 being equal to negative 3 divided by 3. Then I have x being equal to negative 1. Okay. So um, here we have, we're done, right? So we have the solution set. Solution set is just going to be um, as you know, you have x belonging to negative 1 and 5 over 3. Okay. Yeah. So number three, I have the absolute of x minus nine being equal to four. So we are going to do the same thing. We have x minus nine being equal to four or x minus nine being equal to negative four, okay? So I'm gonna have x um, being equal to four plus nine. So x is going to be equal to 13. And that's the that's one solution. And here too, I'm gonna have x might being equal to negative four plus nine. So x is going to be equal to five. So the solution set the solution set is x, you know, belonging to five and thirteen. Okay. So that's the third question. Number four, I have the absolute of two x minus three being equal to nine. And you're going to do the same thing, right? So we have 2x minus 3 being equal to 9 or 2x minus 3 being equal to negative 9, okay? So I'm going to have 2x being equal to 9 plus 3. 2x is equal to 12. 2x divided by 2. 12 divided by 2. So you have x being equal to 6, okay? And then on the right-hand side, you're going to have 2x being equal to negative 9 plus 3. So 2x is equal to negative 6. 2x divided by 2, negative 6 divided by 2. You're going to have x being equal to negative 3, okay? So the solution set is x belonging to negative 3 and 6, okay? So that's the fourth question. The fifth question, you have 3 multiplying 
absolute of 2x minus 9 being equal to 9, okay? So what you're going to do here is, first of all, you have to divide both sides by 3, the coefficient of the absolute value. So that's going to be um, 3 absolute of 2x minus 9 divided by 3 being equal to 9 divided by 3, okay? And then this cancels that. You're going to be left with absolute of 2x minus 9 being equal to 3, okay? Now we can apply what we know already, right? So we have two statements here. We have 2x minus 9 being equal to 3 or 2x minus 9 being equal to negative 3, okay? So you're going to have 2x being equal to 3 plus 9 2x being equal to, wait, I'm gonna have 2x being equal to 12 here, 2x divided by 2, 12 divided by 2, this cancels that, you're gonna have x being equal to 6, okay? Similarly, on the right hand side, you're gonna have 2x being equal to negative 3 plus 9, 2x is gonna be equal to 6, gonna have 2x divided by 2, 6 divided by 2, this cancels that, you're gonna have x being equal to 3, okay? So, um, the solution set is... Hmm, okay, I made a mistake. All right, so um, question number five is um, three absolute of two x minus three being equal to nine, okay? So here, the first thing you have to do here is to divide through by the coefficient of the absolute value. That's gonna be three, right? So I'm gonna have three absolute of two x minus three divided by three. That should be equal to nine divided by three. This cancels that. I, I have absolute of 2x minus 3 being equal to 3, okay? So now I can apply what I know. So I have two statements, 2x minus 3 being equal to 3, or 2x minus 3 being equal to negative 3, okay? So I have 2x being equal to 3 plus 3. Then I have 2x being equal to 6, 2x divided by 2, 6 divided by 2, x is going to be 3, okay? On the right-hand side, you're going to have 2x being equal to negative 3 plus 3. So I have 2x being equal to negative 3 plus 3 goes to 0, okay? So automatically, you have x being equal to 0, okay? Yeah. So the solution set is x being equal to, oh, about belonging to 0 and 3. Okay, yeah. So that's the fifth question. Number six, I have two multiplying the absolute of 9x plus 5 being equal to 21. Okay, so here, um, always try and then make the absolute value stand alone. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the positive 5. And how I'm going to do that is going to be 2 absolute of 9x being equal to 21 minus 5. And I have 2 absolute of 9x being equal to, that is going to give me 16. Now, I divide both sides by the equation of the absolute value, which is 2. I'm going to have 2 absolute of 9x divided by 2. 16 divided by 2. This cancels, these cancel out. I have absolute of 9x being equal to 8, right? Okay. Now I can apply what I know, and I have two statements, 9x being equal to 8, or 9x being equal to negative 8, okay? So I'm going to have x, you know, 9x divided by 9 for one side, 8 divided by 9, and I have x being equal to 8 divided by 9, okay? On the right-hand side, too, I'm going to have 9x divided by 9 equal to negative 8 divided by 9, and that is going to lead to x being equal to negative 8 divided by 9, okay? 
That's cool. So the solution set is x belonging to negative 8 divided by 9, 8 divided by 9. Okay. All right. So that was the sixth question. Question number seven. I have the absolute of x plus 3 plus 9 being equal to 5. So the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the, you know, positive 9. So I'm going to have absolute of x plus 3 being equal to 5 minus 9, right? So I have absolute of x plus 3 being equal to negative 4, okay? But here we have the right-hand side being a negative value, okay? And the absolute value of any number okay is always a positive value okay so it means that there's not going to be any x value or there's not going to be any such value of x who's going to yield a negative value on the right hand side right so it means that x has no solution or this equation has no solution okay so x is just going to belong to the empty set okay so there's no solution so thus there is no solution for the equation, okay? Okay, so this equation has no solution, right? So question eight, you have absolute of five x plus, no, minus two plus six being equal to six, oh, yeah, six. So get rid of the positive six on the left-hand side. So you have absolute of five X minus two being equal to six minus six. I have absolute of five X minus two being equal to zero. Okay. So we can go ahead and then solve this. Okay. Um, so we have two statements. You have five X minus two being equal to zero. The other statement is supposed to be 5x minus 2 being equal to negative of 0. But negative of 0 is just 0, okay? So in this special case, all right, you have one statement, okay? So keep that in mind. So you're going to have 5x being equal to, you know, positive 2. So that's going to be 0 plus 2. So I have 5x plus being equal to 2. You divide both sides by 5. By 5. And then you have x just being equal to 2 over 5 okay so that's the answer okay all right so question 9 we have inequalities we have um absolute of x minus 7 less than 2 okay so if we remember the two statements or we if we remember correctly this has two statements okay so the first statement is going to be x minus 7 less than 2 or x minus 7 greater than negative 2 okay so with inequalities you always flip the inequalities okay you have to flip them so on one side I have x minus 7 I'm gonna have oh, x being less than 2 plus 7 so x is gonna be less than 9 on the right hand side, I'm going to have x being greater than negative 2 plus 7. And I'm going to have x being greater than um, 5. Okay. So here we're going to put these two statements together. So I will always start with this one. I have 5 being less than x and the same x being less than 9. Okay. So that becomes the solution set. So the solution set is that, okay? Okay. But we can write this in the interval notation, okay? And that is going to be x belonging to 5, 9. So you use a parenthesis if you have just a simple inequality. If there's no equal to sign in the inequality, okay? If there is an equal to sign in the inequality, then you use a bracket, okay? 
right? So that's what we have. So we have X belonging to uh, parentheses on both sides, five, nine. So number 10, I have absolute of X less than six. And then you have two statements here. You have S less than six or X greater than negative six. I forgot, um, you can also write this, the solution on the number line. On the number line, I'm gonna have something like, if this is five, this is nine, um, it is open here and open at nine, okay? Then you join with a line, okay? So you keep that in mind. So um, with this one, number 10, we have X being less than six or X being greater than negative six, right? So the solution set is, you know, negative six less than X, less than six, okay? Yeah, and then if I want to write this in the interval notation form, I have X belonging to negative six and six, okay? Or if I want to use the number line, I have negative six here, I can put zero here and I'll put six here. Still per, uh, parenthesis because you're just using a strict inequality, okay? No equal to in it. So that's what we have for number 10. And by 11, we have absolute of x plus one less than or equal to five. So we have two statements here. You have x plus one less than or equal to five or x plus one less than or equal to negative five, okay? So on one side, I have x plus one less than or equal to, oh my bad. I'm gonna be x less than or equal to five minus one or x less than or equal to negative five minus one, okay? So x is gonna be less than or equal to four. Oh, let me just get these off. And on one side, I'm gonna have um, x less than or equal to, um, oh my bad, I didn't change the sign, sorry. So all these are supposed to be greater than or equal to greater than or equal to greater than or equal to negative six, okay? Yeah, so if I put these together, I have the solution set is negative six less than or equal to x less than or equal to four. In interval notation, I have x belonging to. Now we have a less than or equal to. We have equal to in these inequalities, okay? So I'm gonna use a bracket, okay? So negative six and bracket are closing four as well. Telling us that negative six and four are inclusive. If I wanna use the number line, let's say I have negative four, negative six here, zero somewhere here, four somewhere here. I'm gonna use a bracket and I'm gonna join them with a line, okay? All right, so that's cool. Um, number 12. We have the absolute of 2x minus 1 less than 5. And um, you have two statements here too. You have 2x minus 1 less than 5 or 2x minus 1 greater than negative 5. Okay, so always remember to flip the inequalities. So on one side, you have 2x less than 5 plus 1. So 2x is going to be less than 6, and you're going to have 2x divided by 2, less than 6 divided by 2, x is going to be less than 3, okay? On the other side, you're going to have 2x greater than negative 5 plus 1, you're going to have 2x greater than negative 4, and you're going to have 2x divided by 2, greater than negative 4 divided by 2, you're gonna have x greater than negative two, okay? So if I put these two together, I'm gonna to have a solution set being negative two less than x, less than um, three, right? Okay, so in interval, as you know, if I wanna write a solution as inter in interval notation, I'm gonna have x belonging to negative two, it's just parenthesis, right? And if I wanna use the number line, 
Let's say negative two is here somewhere. I have my zero as a neutral. Three. So I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna have that. And I'm gonna join these ones. Okay. So that's number twelve. Number thirteen. I have the absolute of four. My bad. Four. Absolute um, in bracket x minus one plus ten less than or equal to fourteen. Okay. So. Same thing, you have four x2 statements, so four into bracket x minus one plus 10 being less than or equal to 14, or four multiplying x minus one plus 10 being greater or equal to negative 14, okay? So now that we have this, we're gonna have four x minus one on one side being less than or equal to 14 minus 10, okay? And I'm going to have 4x minus 4 less than or equal to, you know, let me not do that now. Let me just 4 in bracket x minus 1 less than or equal to 4, okay? And if I want to expand this bracket, I'm going to have 4x minus 4, 4 multiplies x, and then it multiplies 1, 2 as well, okay? That should be less than or equal to 4. So you're going to have 4x less than or equal to 4 plus 4. So 4x being less than or equal to 8. Then you're going to have 4x divided by 4 less than or equal to 8 divided by 4. You have x being less than or equal to 2. That's one side. On the other side, you're going to have 4 all in bracket x minus 1 greater than or equal to negative 14 minus 10. So I'm going to have 4 in bracket x minus 1 greater than or equal to um, negative 24. If I expand the bracket, if I open the bracket, I'm going to have 4x minus 4 greater or equal to negative 24. 4x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 24 plus 4. Then I'm going to have 4x greater than or equal to negative 20, right? I divide both sides by 4, which happens to be the coefficient of x. That should be greater than or equal to negative 20 divided by 4. x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay. So if I put these two together, the solution set is negative 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Okay. Um, in interval notation i'm going to have x belonging to a bracket negative five two bracket right because you have less than or equal to on both sides okay so um, on the number line negative five can be here zero and let's say two have that have that put them together okay yeah so that's the 13th question Number 14, I have the absolute value of 4x plus 4 divided by 2 less than 8, okay? So here, um, one thing we have to know is that um, if I have the absolute value of a fraction, okay, it's the same as the absolute value of the numerator divided by the absolute value of the denominator, okay? So in this specific um, question, I'm going to have absolute of 4x plus 4 divided by absolute of 2 less than 8, okay? So I'm going to have absolute of 4x plus 4 divided by absolute of 2, which happens to just be a number, is just going to be 2 because absolute of any number is the positive version of that number, okay? And that should be less than 8, okay? So I can multiply each side or each term by 2, which happens to be the, you know, least common denominator of the two terms here. So I have 2 multiplying absolute of 4x plus 4 divided by 2, less than 2 times 8. 2 cancels 2. And then now I have absolute of 4x plus 4, being less than 16, right? Now, I can apply what I know, right? So I have two statements here. 
The first one is 4x plus 4 less than 16 or 4x plus 4 greater than negative 16. Okay. And then what happens here is that we're going to have 4x less than 16 minus 4. And that's going to be 4x less than um, 12. I have 4x divided by 4 less than 12 divided by 4. Okay. So I'm going to have x being less than 3. That's one part of the so one, one solution. And then for the right hand side, I'm going to have 4x uh, greater than negative 16 minus 4. 4x four is going to be greater than negative 20. I have 4x divided by 4 greater than negative 20 divided by 4. I'm going to have x greater than negative 5. Okay. So I can put these two together. I'm going to have negative 5 less than x less than 3. Cool. And um, that's the solution set, right? That's the solution set. So the solution set is ooh, bad. that, okay? Now, in interval notation, I have x belonging to open. It's actually, you know, a parenthesis, negative 5, 3, another parenthesis, right? If I want to draw this on the number line, I'm going to have negative 5 around here somewhere. 0 is here, 3 is here, parenthesis, parenthesis, put them together, right? That's cool. Um, the next question is um, question 15. I have the absolute of x greater than 8, okay? So you have two statements here. You have x being greater than 8 or x being less than negative 8. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you always have to keep that in mind. We flip the signs. I mean the inequalities. So that's just the solution. So you can put them together. But in this specific um, situation, you can't put them together like we used to do in previous questions, right? Because the order of the um, inequalities or the inequalities don't look the same. For instance, let, let me just explain it better. If I have negative 8 less than x here, on the right-hand side or on the other side, I have x greater than something, 8, right? So I can't just merge them together, okay? So what you do here is um, the solution set is, first of all, it's just, you know, um, x less than negative 8 or x greater than 8. That's it. You can't put them together as one um, or as a compound inequality, okay? Um, as interval notation, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have x belonging to. The first statement is x being less than negative, um, oh, negative 8, I'm sorry. So that's supposed to be negative 8, sorry. So any number less than negative 8 satisfies the inequality, right? And these numbers range from negative infinity to 8, okay? And since, since it's a less than sign without an equal to sign, it is going to be parenthesis, okay? Now, or in math is union. So I have union x greater than 8 is going to range from 8 to positive infinity, okay? So you keep this in mind. Now, on the number line, I'm going to have this part is, say, um, oh, this is negative 8, my bad. So negative 8, 0, and then 8. So here I'm going to have parenthesis, okay? And keeps going like that, okay? It doesn't end, it, it goes to the negative infinity, right? And here you have parentheses at eight to the positive side of it, okay? Yeah. All right, number 16, you have the absolute of x minus four greater than or equal to one, 
And here, we're going to have um, x minus 4 greater than or equal to 1, or, um, yeah, x minus 4 greater than or equal to 1, or you're going to have x minus 4 less than or equal to negative 1, okay? So the first one, you're going to have x greater than or equal to 1 plus 4. That's going to be x greater than or equal to 5. And on the right-hand side, you're going to have x minus 4. Oh, my bad. x less than or equal to negative 1 plus 4. You're going to have x less than or equal to 3. Okay? So, in this situation, I don't think you can put them together as well. Right? So, um, the solution set is, first of all, you have x less than or equal to 3 or x greater than or equal to 5, okay? And with this, in interval notation, you're going to have x belonging to um, negative infinity, parenthesis. Anytime you see an infinity, you close it with a parenthesis, okay? So parenthesis and 3 bracket because of the less than or equal to sign. Or is union close at 5 to positive infinity. Okay? Good. So on the number line, you're going to have something like this is 3, that's 0, that's 5 somewhere. Um, parenthesis to the negative side. Parenthesis to the positive side. That is the solution, okay? Number 17, I have absolute of 3x minus 9. Absolute, let me make absolute so I can see more. That should be greater than 15. So we are going to have two statements here. You have 3x minus 9 greater than 15 or 3x minus 9 less than negative 15, okay? So what happens here is that you're going to have 3x greater than 15 plus 9. You have 3x greater than 15 plus 9. That's going to be 24. And then you're going to have 3x greater than 24 divided by 3 divided by 3. x is going to be um, 8. Okay. On the flip side, you're going to have 3x um, less than negative 15 plus 9. And that's going to be 3x um, less than negative, that's going to be negative 6, right? Okay, so I'm going to have 3x divided by 3 less than negative 6 divided by 3. And you're going to have 3, oh, my bad. You're going to have x being less than negative 2, okay? So, you can't put these two together. You can you cannot write um, a compound inequality for these two, okay? So, you're going to have the solution set being x, oh, yeah, less than negative 2, or x greater than 8, okay? So as interval notation, you're going to have x belonging to negative infinity up to negative 2, parenthesis, union 8 to infinity, okay? Yeah, that's cool. Number 18, you have 2 multiplying the absolute of 2x minus 9 plus 10 greater than 16 and uh, what you're gonna do here is first of all you're gonna get rid of all, you just want the absolute value to stand alone right so you have 2 absolute of 2x minus 9 being greater than or equal to 16 minus 10 you have 2 absolute of 2x minus 9 greater than 6 you have 2 you're gonna divide both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2, right? Greater than 6 divided by 2. This cancels that. You have absolute of 2x minus 9 greater than 3, okay? And then you're going to have 
two statements here. You have 2x minus 9 greater than 3 or 2x minus 9 less than negative 3. Okay, so you have 2x greater than, you know, 3 plus 9, 2x greater than um, 12. So you have 2x divided by 2 greater than 12 divided by 2. So x is going to be greater than 6. Okay. Similarly, you're going to have 2x less than negative 3 plus 9, 2x less than 6, 2x divided by 2, less than 6 divided by 2, x is going to be less than 3. Okay, so we can put them together. You can, we, you can write, um, you can write um, a compound um, inequality for this. So you're going to have the solution set being um, x less than 3 or x greater than three, uh, 6. Sorry. So it's interval notation, you're going to have x belonging to negative infinity to 3 or 6 to infinity. You use parentheses for both of them. Okay. And on the interval notation, um, I mean on the number line, you're going to have, say, if 0 is here, let's say 3 is here, say 6 is here, we're going to have an open or parenthesis here, go into the negative, parenthesis here, go into the positive, okay? So that's it. Um, number 19, I have negative 5 absolute of x minus 5 greater than or equal to negative 20, okay? And what you're going to do here, you're going to get rid of the negative 5, okay? So you're going to divide both sides by negative 5. But anytime you divide terms in an inequality by um, a negative sign or uh, by a negative value, you flip the inequality, okay? So it's going to be less than or equal to negative 20 divided by negative 5, okay? So that cancels that, 5 cancels that. We're going to have absolute of x minus 5 being less than or equal to 4, because this cancels that, 5 into that, 4, okay? So we have two statements now here. You can have x minus 5 being less than or equal to 4, or x minus 5 greater than or equal to 4, okay? Oh, I mean negative 4, my bad. Sorry. So negative 4, okay? So you're going to have x less than or equal to 4 plus 5. And then you have x being less than or equal to 9. On the flip side, you're going to have x greater than or equal to negative 4 plus 5. And then that's going to be x greater than or equal to 1, okay? So here, you can't write a compound um, inequality for this. So... What you're going to do is um, the solution set is x um, greater than or equal to negative 1. Oh, I mean 1. Oh, wait. Oh, this one, you can actually do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet. All right, so here you're going to have, yeah, you can write it. You can actually write it. It's going to be 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 9, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. I'm sorry. <laughs> So um, you have x belonging to absolute of, uh, I mean, a closed, that's going to be a bracket. And then 9, use a bracket on, on the right-hand side too, because you have a less than or equal to, okay? So on the number line, you can have 1, let's say 9 over here. Then you have these two brackets, you join them with a line, okay? So that is the solution okay all right so number 20 20 i have negative 6 absolute of 3 minus x less than negative 18 okay so similarly you're going to divide both sides by negative 6 but because you're dividing both terms by a negative number in an inequality you'll have to flip 
the inequality, okay? So I'm going to have negative 6 absolute of 3 minus x divided by negative 6 greater than negative 18 divided by negative 6. This cancels that, that cancels that. Absolute of 3 minus x greater than this cancels that. I'm going to have 3 on the right-hand side. And I'm going to have two statements here. 3 minus x greater than 3 or... 3 minus x less than negative 3, okay? So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to have, you know, 3. Um, okay, so I'm going to have negative x greater than 3 minus 3 because I'm sending 3 on the right-hand side. I'm going to have negative x greater than 0. x has a coefficient, a negative coefficient, right? So I'm going to divide negative x by negative 1, and that is going to flip the sign again. So that's going to be 0 divided by negative 1. So I have x being less than 0, okay? Because 0 divided by any number is 0. On the flip side, I have 3, I mean, negative x less than negative 3 minus 3. So I have negative x less than negative 6 have negative, I, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. I flip the inequality again. So negative 6 divided by negative 1. That cancels that. X is going to be greater than 6. Okay? All right. So with this, I can't write a compound um, um, inequality for this. So the solution set, the solution set is x being less than 0 or x being greater than 6, okay? So in interval notation, I have x belonging to negative infinity to 0, parenthesis, union, 6 to infinity, okay? So that's the answer. Or 21, I have 8 less than or equal to absolute of 4x minus 12. Okay, and what you're gonna do here is, um, for simplicity purposes, I'm just gonna rewrite this as four, absolute of four x minus 12, greater than, because I'm flipping the entire inequality, okay? Greater than eight, it's the same thing, okay? So now I have two statements here, I have the first one being four x minus 12, being greater than or equal to eight, or, 4x minus 12 being less than or equal to negative 8, okay? So I have um, 4x being greater than or equal to 8 plus 12, as usual. 4x greater than or equal to 20. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Greater than or equal to 20 divided by 4. I'm going to have x being greater than or equal to 5 for one side. On the flip side, I'm going to have 4x being less than or equal to negative 8 plus 12. 4x being less than or equal to, um, that's going to be 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Less than or equal to 4. 4. And x is going to be less than or equal to 1. Ooh, my bad. That was, that is a nasty one. So, um, can we write this as a compound one? Nope. So, the solution set is x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 5, okay? So in interval notation, x is going to be long to negative infinity to 1. I mean, it's going to be a bracket, right, because of this equal to sign. Union, absolute 5, um, I bet, bracket 5 to infinity, okay? So that's it. And on the number line, as usual, you're going to have, if this is 1, that is 5 on the number line. You're going to have that right to the negative. That's going to be that right to the positives, okay? And then our last question, that's question 22, is 8 less than, I mean, greater than absolute of 1 minus x, okay? And then what we're going to do here is, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip the entire inequality. So I'm going to have absolute of 1 minus x less than 8. Okay. 
And then what I'm gonna do here is I have two statements. I have one minus X less than eight or, you know, one minus X greater than negative eight. Okay, so two statements here. So the first one I'm gonna have negative X less than eight minus one because I'm sending neg I'm sending one to the right hand side. Negative X less than seven. I divide both sides by negative one because X still has a coefficient of negative one. And once I do that, I have to um, flip the inequality. So seven divided by negative one. So this cancels that I have X being greater than negative seven, okay? Seven divided by negative one is negative seven. Keep that in mind. So that's one part of it. On the flip side, I have negative x greater than negative eight uh, minus one. So I'm gonna have negative x greater than negative nine. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one again. And that is gonna flip that. So I'm gonna have negative nine divided by negative one. That cancels out. I'm gonna have x being less than nine, All right? That's good. So can we write this? as a compound inequality? Yes. So the solution set is actually negative seven less than X, right? And the same X is less than nine, okay? So in interval notation, I'm gonna have X belonging to um, negative seven, nine, using parentheses because you're just using less than less than signs, not less than or equal to. So on the number line, if this is negative seven, that's say zero, nine here somewhere, I'm gonna do that and that, oh, my bad, parenthesis, my bad, parenthesis, okay? So these, um, these solutions, is, I, I mean, you know, this is just all the possible questions you can get under absolute um, value equations and qualities, all right? And then we solved all of these. If you like the content of, the, of, of, of my channel or this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to my channel. There are still more to come. Actually, there are a lot of questions I'm gonna solve like these in different topics in, um, I mean, different subtopics under algebra. So stay tuned for the uh, upcoming videos. Thank you.